So I'd like to start um, by thanking the EduLearn team for the kind invitation for me to be here today to join you. Um, it's fantastic. Um, so to introduce myself, I'm um, a learning scientist. I'm not a computer scientist. But I've been involved in AI and education for around 10 years. Um, I'm based at University College London. I also work for UNESCO and for the International Research Center of Artificial Intelligence and for the Council of Europe. Um, in my presentation, um, I'm going to be talking, taking a, a, a critical studies perspective on artificial intelligence and education. So, um, to begin with, in my opinion, what AI can achieve is pretty amazing. So, from beating the world's best player of Go to automatically identifying diabetes from retinal scans and helping protect against fraud which is why I have um, huge respect for my colleagues, the AI researchers. But AI is not as good as many say. For example, we were told that AI was going to bring huge, huge benefits to tackle the COVID pandemic. But the reality is that so far, AI actually has contributed very little. None of the thousands of AI models were of any clinical use. And that's just one meta-analysis. I know of others that say very similar things. Nonetheless, AI does bring some interesting possibilities to education. And there are many people out there who will tell you all about those possibilities, if only because AI in education is already a $6 billion market. So in this talk, I'm not going to do that. Instead of being yet another cheerleader for AI in education, my focus is on the very many current challenges and making suggestions for a human-centered future of AI and education. In fact, you might think that sometimes I'm a bit negative. But I like to think I bring a critical but constructive perspective. OK, in fact, the connections between AI and education are perhaps more complex than many recognize. And there's a lot of hype and a lot of exaggeration. So to help us navigate that complexity, I'm first, I'm going to explore some of the connections in terms of three buckets. So my first bucket is learning with AI, which includes students supporting AI, teachers supporting AI, and system supporting AI. And then we have learning about AI, how it works, how to create it, the techniques and the technologies. And then there's what I call preparing for AI. What it means to live in a world increasingly impacted on by AI. How we embed human values and what are the ethical consequences. I'll begin with learning with AI, focusing first on system supporting. So system supporting AI is most similar to the AI used in many businesses already today. It's AI for the boring back-end education administration tasks. It involves AI for recruitment and financial planning and some more education-focused tasks, such as admissions and timetabling, learning management and attendance monitoring. Although important and growing, this has probably received the least focus by researchers and or the commercial sector. And to be honest, it's not really my area. So what about student um, supporting AI? Now, this is where all the money is and where the focus has been for more than 40 years, which is why there are so many different types. I'm just going to summarize a few of them. To begin with, there's the so-called intelligent tutoring systems. The list on the right are just some of the multi-million dollar funded companies that are already offering this kind of tool. In summary, the system provides the student with some information and an activity or a quiz, and how the student responds determines the next piece of information, the next activity, the next quiz. Now, this adaptivity means that in theory, every student follows their own pathway through the material to be learned. 
Another type of student supporting AI are dialogue based tutoring systems. These use a Socratic conversational approach, a dialogue of questions and answers to guide the learner through the material to be learned. And then there's automatic writing evaluation, mostly for formative assessment, but increasingly for summative assessment. There's also what I call learning network orchestrators, which use AI to connect people together. Like this one, Smart Learning Partner from Beijing Normal University. With this system, if a student hasn't understood something in their classroom, they call up the app on their phone, type in what they want to know, and the app connects them with a list of human tutors, all rated by other students, much like a dating app and they get 20 minutes of one-to-one -one human tuition, sharing screen and voice only. Now, what I particularly like about this tool is it's the learner who's in charge, not the AI. Then there's language learning apps, which are similar to the so-called intelligent tutoring systems, but with natural language processing to check the student's choice of words and pronunciation. And there's chatbots, of course, which are increasingly being used in education to provide immediate support to students, mostly about practical things such as where's my next class and when's my examination. And finally, I'm going to mention these AI-assisted virtual reality, augmented reality, and simulations. So in summary, a huge and growing range of applications of AI in education designed to support students which by default often means replacing human teacher functions. So what about teacher-supported AI tools? In fact, there's very little. I hope you like my animation. Um, very little that is uh, genuinely designed to support teachers. And for me, a dashboard doesn't really count. However, very recently, I have come across a few teacher-supporting tools, although I've not been able to find out much about them yet. Anyway. First, there's using AI to curate education resources, such as, this, um, such as X5 Gone from my colleagues at IACAI, and similar tools from IBM, like this one, and also from the Lebanon. Although all of them still need a lot of work to be really useful to teachers. Then there's this tool, the AI Coach from Edthena, essentially an intelligent tutoring system for teacher training. Interesting. And then there's GRADE, which is designed to support human teachers when they mark assessments. Now, I kind of like this because, in other words, rather than the automatic writing evaluation tools that I mentioned earlier, here it's the teacher who does the assessment, not the AI. But as I say, that's about all of the AI tools specifically designed to support teachers rather than AI tools designed to support students which effectively aim to replace teacher functions. So that's a summary, a whirlwind tour of learning with AI. What about learning about AI? There's a lot of initiatives. For example, at UNESCO, we're working on a range of projects, including mapping AI curricula from around the world, as well as curating and providing links to resources um, for learning about AI. Meanwhile, in the US, there's the AI for K-12 initiative, which is developing an AI curriculum for US schools, focused on five big ideas, AI and perception, representation and reasoning, learning, natural interaction, and societal impact. Meanwhile, universities around the world have been offering <coughs> AI courses for many years, covering everything from machine learning to coding and data science. And for ordinary citizens, there are resources like this one, which is Elements of AI from Finland. So in summary, this connection between AI and education, learning about AI, is pretty well developed. However, what about preparing for AI? I'm talking about preparing everyone for the impact of AI on humanity. How do we deal with the AI hype, AI biases, fake news, the impact on privacy, on human agency, or on jobs? Many researchers are now focusing on the impact of AI on people, 
such as this, the AI Now Institute in New York. However, there's very little happening in education for younger students. In fact, I think this bucket, preparing for AI, should be part of the previous bucket, learning about AI. For me, preparing for AI should be integrated with every learning about AI course. The teaching of AI needs to bring together both the technical and the human dimensions of AI, how AI works and can be created, together with the impact of AI on human cognition, on human rights and jobs. And these two dimensions should be interwoven throughout the course. The human dimension shouldn't just be tagged on somewhere at the end. I separate it out just to stop it being forgotten altogether, which as UNESCO's mapping of AI curricula has shown, is all too often the case. So what are these AI hyper myths? To answer that, we first need to return to AI in general. Like any innovation, with AI, there's often more hype and more myths than reality. One myth is that AI is better than humans at image recognition. OK, so I ask you, when you look at this image, what do you see? A panda? The good thing is that the AI agrees but with only 57.7% confidence. Now, what happens when we mix this picture of the panda with noise? Well, we end up with this. What do you see? Now, the AI is 99.3% confident that it's a given. So, AI is not as strong as we would be led to believe. How about this one? Facial recognition, such as this example from Amazon. The system is able to recognize people like me, lighter skinned males, with 100% accuracy, which is why I avoid robbing banks. But men with darker skin, it's not so good. And for women with lighter skin, even worse. while for women with darker skin, unacceptable perhaps. But maybe this is just about the maturity of the technology and as it develops, it will get better. But that still leaves open the question whether facial recognition should be used widely at all. What are the possible impacts of facial recognition on humans? Another myth is that AI doesn't need people, but that's not true. A human chooses and labels the data. In companies like this in developing countries like Kenya, the workers spend all day identifying their objects in streams of video. Here's a person, here's a car, here's another car. AI also designs the network and writes the algorithms and then trains the network. A human then curates the outputs and makes the value judgments. So don't get suckered by this idea that AI doesn't need people. Many also claim that the AI is intelligent. I mean, it's right there in the name, yeah? Artificial intelligence. I'm here to tell you, it is not intelligent. Machine learning, which is currently the dominant approach in AI, is about statistics and pattern finding in data. No AI system today comes anywhere close to human intelligence. Not even the large language models such as GPT-3 that have been in the news recently. Sometimes AI tools might appear intelligent, but that's a long way from actually being intelligent. Now, this picture is the original Mechanical Turk, a chess-playing machine from the late 18th century, which appeared intelligent the machine could play chess, but it was revealed to be a fake. Inside, there was a human chess player. And finally, our increasing reliance on AI means that the whole world is becoming increasingly reliant on a small number of big tech companies 
over which we have no democratic control. So I still think AI is amazing, but there are many challenges. So how does this play out in education? What are the claims made by many AI and education companies and how do they stand up? First, as we've seen, many claim that the AI education tool is intelligent, but they're not. No, I, no AI education tool is anywhere near as intelligent as a human teacher, nowhere near as intelligent as any of you. AI systems in education are extremely limited in what they can achieve. It all smoke and mirrors, and we mustn't allow ourselves to be fooled. Another claim is that these learning with AI tools will save teacher time. But that claim has been made about education technologies for at least 100 years, and it's never happened. Of course, AI, we're told, is different. And AI tools will finally save teacher time. I know that most of us here most teachers, including me, would love a tool that takes care of my marking. But no AI system is capable of the depth of interpretation or accuracy of analysis that a teacher can give. It also ignores how much a teacher learns about their students when they read what the student has written, insights that no dashboard will ever give. So maybe AI will save teacher time, although there's no evidence for that yet. But at what cost to the quality of teaching and learning? And if it does save teacher time, with a focus on efficiency, which is not a word I find comfortable in education, what will the impact be on teacher jobs? Now, what about personalization? This is something we hear about all the time. Again, it's an ambition that's around, been around for almost 100 years, which has re-emerged most recently from Silicon Valley. If we can have personalized recommendations on Netflix, why can't we do that in education? But this completely misses the point. Firstly, it ignores the fact that teachers have been personalizing education for time immemorial. But anyway, some learning with AI tools might provide each student with their own individual pathway through the materials, but they still all take them to the same fixed learning outcomes as everyone else. For me, this is a weak understanding of personalization. It's more like the homogenization of students, ensuring they all fit in the same right box. For me, real personalization is not about personalized pathways, but about helping each individual student to achieve their own potential, to self-actualize, to enhance their agency, which is something that no existing AI and education tool does. In any case, the data these so-called individual pathways are based on are averages. They're not individual. And they might be applicable to groups, but their usefulness for individual students is questionable. Education for me, and as we've heard earlier, it's all about collaboration and the other social interaction aspects of teaching of learning, which is the antithesis of the so-called personalization. Now, these tools might be useful for homework, but I don't understand why some schools use the so-called personalization tools in classrooms, 30 students, 30 computers. And classrooms are, by definition, social spaces. Unless, perhaps, some of these teachers are using these tools as AI-assisted babysitters. And then the, so, the ethical questions, starting with the ethics of data. Issues such as informed consent, Rarely are the students given a choice of whether they use these systems. What about privacy, or should we call it surveillance? And ownership, who owns the data that the students create with their interactions? The students or the commercial developers? Exploiting student data is usually at the heart of most AI ed companies' business models. But although thinking about the ethics of data is necessary, 
it isn't sufficient. There's also the ethics of pedagogical choice. Almost every existing commercial learning with AI tool adopts a behaviorist or an instructionist approach. This is an extremely primitive pedagogy that involves spoon-feeding information while avoiding failure, and which ignores more than 60 years of pedagogical developments. Spoon-feeding also prioritizes remembering over thinking and knowing facts over critical engagement, thus undermining student agency and robust learning. These pedagogical choices all have ethical consequences. And in so doing, these tools often disempower teachers, turning them all too often into mere technology facilitators. They switch the equipment on and off. And again, this misses the point, ignoring the amazing skills that human teachers have that no AI tool can replicate. It also represents the commercialization of education by stealth, as education systems increasingly rely on educational tools provided by the commercial sector, including big tech such as Facebook, Google, Amazon. That's not the world that I want. AI might also have negative impact on human cognition. As a metaphor, think about GPS and route planning software, which we all now depend on to navigate to our destinations around our towns. But there's evidence that people who use GPS more now have worse spatial memory. So not only do AI classroom devices narrow students' learning, they might also impact negatively on their cognitive development. The point is we just don't know. Some tools also claim to detect the student's emotional state. The aim's okay to move a student from negative emotional state to positive to enhance their learning. But using AI tools to detect student emotion when it works, which it mostly doesn't, is, in my opinion, it crosses a final privacy frontier. As does this. The use of AI to monitor or surveil student attention in class. In fact, this technology was stopped in Chinese schools a couple of years ago, but it's still being developed and used elsewhere, such as in e-proctoring. In the pandemic, as education moved online, many assessments also moved online. And exam monitoring or e-proctoring companies saw their businesses grow massively. But e-proctoring is controversial. It's accused of intrusion, failing to work properly, preventing students taking their exams, and exacerbating mental health problems, to name just a few. The point is that this is another example of automating poor pedagogic practices rather than using AI to develop innovative approaches. Why are we using AI to facilitate exams, which we all know are shallow and less than useful? Instead, where is the AI that's innovating how we assess and accredit learning? And I worry that, that this is the logical conclusion of current approaches to AI in education. When a child's born, why don't we just put a a microchip with all the world's knowledge into their brain. Or perhaps one day we can do it with a pill. This might seem an exaggeration, but the chip isn't. Elon Musk and multiple other companies are developing brain-based computer chips as we speak. However, again, this misses the point. It conflates education and learning with knowledge acquisition. But education is so much more than that. The thing is that most AI and education developers start with the AI and look around to see what problems they might fix. I think we need to turn this around. We need to start with the problem, the education problem, in which educators and academics are the experts, and then ask AI engineers to use their experts, expertise to help solve those genuine problems. Put another way, most AI and education developers focus on the obvious symptoms rather than the complex causes of the problems that education faces. The symptoms might be severe, such as children not receiving the education they deserve, and using technology might help some of them. But the real issue, the causes, are the lack of qualified teachers, 
and the use of poor pedagogic practices, which the AI tools don't even begin to address. Putting technologies such as AI tools into settings where, for example, there aren't enough experienced teachers is a techno-solutionist approach which addresses the symptoms and not the causes, which perpetuates rather than solves the real problems. A short-term, possibly exciting fix, but the real problems remain. Here's another example of techno-solution. What's the problem? Students spend time queuing in canteens to pay for their lunch. So what's the techno-solution? Face recognition to automate uh, payments. But the real problem is how do we ensure all students get a healthy lunch? And what's a human or social solution? How about making the, the food free for students? They don't need to pay. This is a picture from the UK just a couple of months ago. But even if you reject my concerns, if you think I'm making a fuss over nothing, we still don't really know if any of the AI tools actually do what they claim to do. Where's the evidence? The reality is that almost no AI and education companies' products have been independently evaluated. It's all just marketing. If the learning with AI tools are so good, where are the robust, independent, randomized control trials? There are very, very few. Now, having said all of that, what some AI tools can achieve in education is still impressive. The researchers have overcome some huge technical challenges. In a sense, they've managed to climb this huge mountain. But still, the tools that they've developed are very limited when compared with human teachers and contemporary pedagogy. Perhaps most importantly, they ignore the bigger mountain of possibilities that AI might help achieve. So rather than automating poor pedagogic practices, AI developers need to leverage AI's amazing capabilities to innovate teaching and learning without compromising pedagogy or human values, to empower students and teachers, to support inclusion equity and for the common good. In particular, instead of pretending that an AI tool is better than the teacher, which it never is, where are the AI-powered virtual exoskeletons for teachers that help them become super teachers? So far, there's little research into such a thing and no known commercial products. So in conclusion, to be clear, I'm not saying that AI or AI in education are always bad. I still believe that there are some amazing potential. But I am criticizing current applications of AI in education and the way things are developing. In my opinion, we need to change the trajectory. What do we want our education systems to achieve? Students with lots of exam certificates? Or independent, creative, and critical thinkers who are able to help society develop most effectively for the common good? That's our choice. And that will help decide the right kind of AI in education. So what I am saying is that AI does some amazing things, but it's not as clever as many people claim. AI is already having a major impact on education, and it has the potential to transform education for good, but if we're not careful, also for bad. We need to avoid simply automating poor pedagogic practices. Instead, we need to use the power of AI to develop innovative approaches to teaching and learning that address real problems. We need to empower teachers and provide them with professional development so that they can decide which AI tools might help their teaching practice. We need tools that promote student agency, helping them to achieve their personal potential to self-actualize, not tools that homogenize students. We need to recognize that embedding commercial AI tools in classrooms is a commercialization of education by the back door. And finally, we need to ensure that AI in education meets real needs, is inclusive and equitable, and serves the common good. Thank you very much for listening.